is the color man, Brad Haugen. Brad, an interesting contrast in offensive styles today. That's right, Dave. Um, as we know, the Buena Vista is basically a traditional, somewhat smash mouth football team, if you will. They like to just run it up the gut, you know, and then maybe throw a pass here and there. And that's not what we're going to see from Upper Iowa. They're more of a spread out kind of offense. They run a three wide receiver set, a run and shoot, if you will. And it's going to be pretty interesting to see how the two teams handle each other's contrasting styles. That's a, that's a very good point. Contrasting styles may be a lot here, folks, because Matt Walshire, starting quarterback from Olin, a sophomore for Upper Iowa, averaging 1,205, not uh, not averaging, has 1,205 yards for the game for the year, averaging 241 yards a game passing. Beavers are going to have a tough time today. He's ranked number 14th in the nation in total offense, leads the conference in both in both total offense and passing yards, and no team's been able to stop him this year. BV's best chance is to try to contain him and see what they can do. All right, well, why don't we take it? Why don't we take a, a little run through through the uh, starting lineups for both teams? We're not going to go every player, folks. We'll do that in due time, but we're going to concentrate on certain portions of each selected team that we feel are vital to the success of either team. Now we're going to start with a B Buena Vista College defense. The secondary. It's got to have a big game today, Brad. That's right, Dave. Um, with the three wide receiver set, that's something that Buena Vista hasn't seen all year. They've had two weeks to work on it. They're gonna. Coach Twait tells us that they're going to try it with five defensive backs today, which is something they haven't done before. Okay, those five defensive backs are Coy Dalton, Troy Thompson, Dan Roberts, Brent Achenbach, Kerry Murphy, and Summy. Um, I don't know his name. Well, we'll get to him later. He's playing free safety. The 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 back defensive backfield for Buena Vista has to come through in a big way. They're anchored by Achenbach and Murphy, you'd have to say. That's right. They're the, they're the leaders. They're the two guys out there. They're going to keep everybody settled down. You know, there's a, there's going to be a lot of new plays. Um, Upper Iowa also runs with a no huddle offense. That means they don't they don't break between plays. They just get right back on the line of scrimmage and they call them from there. That's going to be tough on the defense to get their defensive calls in there in time. And that's something Coach Toit was concerned with. Yes, and he should be. Now we'll switch over to the Upper Iowa defense. This is a defense Buena Vista has not faced all year long. We've got three linebackers in there set and they have a lot of work to handle that one, don't they? That's right. Uh, Str starting strong safety, uh, Todd Eichlenberg, he's a senior out of New Hartford, leads the team with seven sacks. He's a strong safety, but quite often he lines up on the on the line, gets a lot of sacks, and there's a great athlete, real quick, real tough to get to block. He could he could be a trouble for the Beaver offense. Now the defensive back we missed is Chad Summey. My apologize, my apologies to him. Sorry, Chad. He's number 21 for the Buena Vista Beavers. You will see him at free safety today. Now, the Beavers are coming into this game in 0-4, but their mental mindset, as we talked through them during the week, didn't seem to be like that, did it? No. When you... When you look at 0-4 is not a good record, but this is a very good 0-4 football team. They've played some real tough competition. Central, at the time, was ranked number five in the nation when they played them. Lost a tough game to them. And looking at the second half of the season, their goal is to come out with a winning record at 5-4, and four, and it starts with a big game against Upper Iowa today. Okay, Innovation Video and KBVC are proud to bring you the 1993 Buena Vista Beavers homecoming game. As you see the starting lineups roll across your screen, this telecast is being filmed, announced, and presented to you live entirely by the students of Buena Vista College. Advisors are Mike Miller and Paul Bowers, campus engineer Mark Brockmeyer. We thank th those people and all the people hel helping out in this tele televised uh, game. There you Sorry go. for the stutter. We got a minute until kickoff, and this crowd is getting pumped up. I say professors, faculty, as well as students and residents of the community. A lot of people turning out today, Brad. That's right. It's, a, it's homecoming 1993. Everybody's coming out to support their Beavers. And like Coach Twait said, the football team, their number one job for homecoming is to win a football game. Now the uh, Beavers are playing somewhat of a different defense. They are playing one linebacker as well as the uh, s uh, six defensive backs, something new that they haven't done. That's right, Dave, but the, like we like we said before, a lot of teams don't like the week off that some colleges have, but Buena Vista used it to get some different concepts going, get some different setups, and they're going to be ready. They're hungry. They're ready right, to play. We're ready to kick this puppy off. Ten seconds to kick off both teams on the field, as you can see. 
Craig Williams is back. No, uh, they've got a new set here. We've got number 39 for BV, number 38 for BV, 22 and 27 back. We'll get the names for you right away. Folks. Number 39 is Mark, Mark Severs. He's a defensive back, a freshman out of Boone, Iowa. Darren Dietz is number 27 and number 38 38 is Chad Hissler, another defensive back, also a freshman. And those are the return men for Buena Vista. And the kickoff, number 18 for Upper Iowa. Let's her rip. We are underway here in Storm Lake. Dietz with a return coming up to the right side of the field. He's got oh, he breaks it. Oh, oh tripped up at the 36-yard line. Buena Vista did a nice job of setting up the return on that. He only had one man to beat, and that... And that kick got the shoestring tackle. A return of 15 yards on the kickoff for Buena Vista. Troy Stoddard leads his team onto the field. Stoddard, gone for the past couple weeks, is back, and he says he's ready to play. They That's bring right. Their they bring their wide receivers and their offense up to the line. Craig Williams to the near side of the field. Stoddard under center. He hands off to the first man through Hendrickson, and he gets about four yards. He's up to the 30 eight, seven, excuse me, 37 yard line, a gain of four. That's right. One of the keys of the game, Coach Twait said, was to get, get on the board early. In their first four games this year, Buena Vista's fallen behind early and just, it's been too hard for them to catch up. They want to put the shoe on the other foot, as Coach Twait says, and put an early score on the board. Now, Hendrickson is a good play as player as they bring him up. Stoddard takes the ball in the center, rolling left. He's going to keep that. No, he throws. Ooh. Just misses the intended receiver, number four, Brett Schweizo. Another big key to this game is going to be the offensive line. They've had a they've had a couple injuries this week. Had a couple guys moved around. They got three new players in, in new positions, and we're, it's going to be interesting to see how they can handle the the pressure. Now, Stoddard, you could see the uh, you could see the difference in the BV offense right there. As he got in the pocket, rolled out, very mobile. He adds a new dimension to the whole offense right there. You know, he, he's not a classic drop back passer. He's a good runner. And, here he hands off. Hands off to Hendrickson again, who pounds for three more yards. He's up to the 42-yard line, depending on the spot. I think they're going to mark it directly on the 40, Brad. That's going to bring up fourth down, and BV's going to have to punt. But you have to, you can't you can't knock them too too much on that because they did they did come out and they didn't back down at all. That's the that's the big key here, coming right at them. They're hungry after two weeks off. They're ready to hit some people and hit. Huffy punts. Sorry about that, Brad. No problem. And oh, takes a Upper Iowa bounce dead at the 38-yard line of Upper Iowa. What were you going to say, sir? Now, you'll notice right there, here Upper Iowa comes onto the field. And watch now how they won't get into a huddle. They'll just go right to the line of scrimmage. They're going to line right up there, and the defense has to have their calls made already. Now, this is a different kind of offense that they don't run the ball that much, Brad. And they move their running backs and their wide receivers in motion quite a bit. You'll see a lot of motion on this Upper Iowa offense. Now, look at the quarterback is lined up on the right side of the line. Number 21. Billy Proctor, I do believe, is under center. In motion is number 40. Back. They're running the ball. Option. Wide punt. Number 40 gets the ball. He's up the left side to about the 43-yard line. I do believe a gain of about two yards. Not a good play for Upper Iowa as that pitch was pretty high there. It was an interesting set. Now, Billy Proctor is normally the running back, and Walshire, the quarterback, lined up on the line. It's I, interesting. I'm not exactly sure what they're trying right here now. Now Walshire's out of the game. Number 21 in there again. It's an option. He's coming around the right side. And he's tackled. 42, Kerry Murphy with a tackle. Coming from behind, nailing the defensive end. First. Murphy's going to have to have a big game today. He's going to have to anchor that defense. And looks like without Walshire in there, they're... Excuse All they'll be me, doing I, is running. Excuse me, I correct myself. That was Nick Grant. Uh, 42 and 43 are the numbers for the two respective players. Sorry to both of those players. Washire is still not in the game. Nobody under center. Number 21 finally steps under center. We've got a snap. A fumble! fumble! And BB recovers! They get the ball. Number 57! Now, I can't speak for Upper Iowa, but I don't understand that offensive setup right there. Jason Cluckholm with the fumble recovery. Find out who number 21 for Upper Iowa is, if you would, please. 
as that is a total, total misconception to me. Stoddard brings it into the game, brings his offense on the field once again for their second possession. Number 21 is Mario Coleman. He's, a, he's listed as a wide receiver out of Chicago, Illinois. But now Stoddard hands Beavers. off to number, he hands off to the running back, Brian Hart, if I do believe. Or Andy Joyce checked into the game? No, it's Andy Joyce checked in the game. Sorry to Brian Hart. Maybe we'll find out what happened. Brian Hart was down as the starter. Joyce gains about three yards on the play. They're up to the 47-yard line. There's a face mask call against Upper Iowa University, and that's going to move the ball another five yards. Good and for the now, Beavers. And now they're on the 38-yard line. This is the kind of start the Beavers wanted. We're at 13 minutes and 15 seconds into the first quarter, and the Beavers are pumped. They're, they're not faltering at all. That's right. It's still early, but that fumble could loom big Start near the end of the game. Stoddard brings his team up to the line. Number 62, the right tackle for Stoddard offense. Chris off. Lachaud said, uh, said some few words. He handed off to, I believe, Jimmy Hendrickson. Might have been Andy Joyce again. Jimmy Hendrickson. Jimmy Hendricks was. And he gains about two yards. He's up to about the 41-yard line. Just in between, just outside the 41. That'll bring up second down and at about, oh, I'd say, three yards. Oh, they gave him a rather generous spot, moving it up a little bit, and now they're going to have to measure for it. That's right. This is the kind of offensive uh, display that uh, Vunavis has been lacking a couple of weeks. Yes, it is. Well, that's with, that's with Troy Stouter, you know. Oberhauer stepped in and did a fine job at a, as a quarterback, but Stouter's their main man right now. They got the first down, and that means a lot to this team right now as they're moving the ball. Again, they've got a different defense that they're going to, so that it has to be a good confidence builder for them. Yes, it does. BV's very good at moving the ball. The key is when they get down inside that 20-yard line in the red zone, they're going to have to put it into the end zone. Stoddard brings his uh, team up to the line. Hands off to Andy Joyce. He gets nothing. He is swamped, gang tackled by about six upper Iowa players, led by number 93 for the defense. Craig Williams, their offensive receiver, was to the off side of the field. He has to have a big game receiving the ball. Yes, he does. Coach, Coach Twait talked about mixing up the offense. A little run, a little pass, keep them on their toes, keep this defense thinking the whole time. Starter brings his line, uh, his uh, offense up to the line once again. He's back to pass, rolling right. He's got some Extremely time. mobile. Gets around the corner for about two yards. You credit that to the upper Iowa defensive backfield. When Stouter came around the end, no one was open. He, the ball will be marked at about the 40, oh, directly on the 45, just up, just the end of the football on the 45. So we'll Check call, that, that would be the 35-yard line, Dave. Excuse me, sorry. No problem. The 35-yard line, the cloudy day, Brad. It's That's what cloudy. it is. Yes, it is. <laughs> and it's the excitement. It's the excitement, Dave. But you also have to credit uh, Stouter's athletic ability. We can't speak enough about that. Stouter brings his uh, offense up to the line once again. Back to the pass. We got a screenplay. Hendrickson catches the ball. Barrels. He will not get the yardage. They are stopped at the 35. Number 17 for Upper Iowa. Read that play rather well. That's Lennox Scaly. He's a defensive back, a junior out of Rancho Bernardo, California. Extremely well. He came up. He met. He kept containment. Met Hendrickson head on. That will bring up fourth down. I believe the Beavers are going for it. No use punting in this part of the... No, you're too close to the end zone, and this could be the boost they might need. Stoddard brings his offense up to the line. Drop back pass. Fires across the middle. Oh. I think we should have pass interference. No call. Dwayne is upset about that. The defense will have to come onto the field. So Upper Iowa gets the ball on downs. They'll be starting out at the 35-yard line. Nick Grant in at the middle linebacker position. And here comes Walshire. Yeah, there he is. Stepping under center. Again, the no huddle offense. A lot of motion. Interesting to see. The first time Walshire. Option. Hand off. Hands off to Billy Proctor who gains about five yards. On first down, Billy Proctor, what a running back. Yes, he is, but we can't we can't forget about that upper Iowa offensive line. They're big, they're experienced, and they work together really well. He got a quite a hole in there. Again, the no huddle offense. 
Walshire under center calling out the play. Barons and Edwards await the offensive line of Upper Iowa. We got a blitz and Nick Grant with the sack. That was an impressive defensive line surge right there. They just blasted by that Upper Iowa offensive line, which I was just bragging up. Yes, right through the middle of the line, basically untouched. That's right. We Walshire have... got hit pretty hard on that play. Yes, and he steps under center once again. That's a loss of about seven yards. They're at their own 33-yard line. Back in motion, slips a little bit. Walshire back to pass. He catches a catches number 21, and number, number 23 makes a great play. I believe that's Thompson. Yes, it is. Dave Troy Thompson just did an excellent job covering him on that play. An excellent play, and the, the upper Iowa Peacocks are going to have to punt. Craig Williams will receive the punt. He is waiting back at the 25 of Buena Vista. An, express, an, an impressive defensive stand for the Beavers. Two in a row for the Beavers right here. That's got to give them confidence, and that's got to help the offense, oh, too. Oh, double snap. Oh, they almost got it. A pooch kick. Craig Williams calling for the fair catch. Catches it at his 31-yard line. That's advantage. Uh, that's advantage, Buena Vista. That's right. So Stoddard comes out for his second, third possession for Buena Vista, bringing the offense up to the line. Now, they've got to move the ball, but their defense is playing inspired football. Yes, they are, and that's another key to the game. We've talked about a couple of them so far, but the, the biggest one that Coach Dwayne said was keeping this Upper Iowa offense off the field, and the defense has done a great job of that right now. Stoddard under center. Hendrickson, the lone setback. Stoddard back to pass, waiting for somebody, waiting for an outlet. Let's her rip, intended for, for number 88, and incomplete. Now, even though that play was broken up by the defense, it's it's really impressive to see how confident Stoddard is in the backfield. He had three guys breathing right down his neck, and he was still looking for the open receiver and telling guys where to block. He's, he's really a cool quarterback. That pass intended for Mike Amos, number four coming into the game for Buena Vista. That is Zach Dillavo. He's spread out to the right side. Williams down on the near side. Stoddard under center. What a good shot by the field camera. Stoddard hands off to the first back through the hole. Hendrickson gains five yards, depending on the spot, to the 35-yard line. That's a tough run by Hendrickson. He carried three or four Upper Iowa players with him on that play. Banging up. That'll bring up third and six as they, as they place it just inside the 34. Number 16, Brett Schwiesel entering the game, coming to the near side. Craig Williams on the far side. Hendrickson and Hart are your setbacks. Hand off to Hart up the left side. Gain of about three as he's pushed back. Forward progress places him at about the 37 yard line. So the Buena Vista Beavers are forced to punt. Huckstra, or Hufke is back to punt number nine. I do believe that is his number. Yep. And I am correct. He's back to punt. And a good punt. Back to the 30. Fumble! And the Beavers Beaver recover again! again. No. That was recovered by number 65 for Buena Vista. I believe that's Edwards. Number 65, Jason Giso. My mistake. Good job, Beavers, as they have recovered two punts down in Buena Vista territory, or Upper Iowa territory. There you go. I'm so excited. So Starter doesn't even get a rest, and they bring on the BV offense. Let's see how they can do. <clears throat> Starter brings it up under center. He's back to pass, rolling left. He's got plenty of time. Let's, her, let's a pass go to number 86. Williams completed across the center of the field. That is, should be a first down. That's a really nicely designed play right there. Stoddard, natural rollout quarterback, really confident running the ball, and found the open receiver coming across the middle. That is pure athletic ability by both Craig Williams and Troy Stoddard. That's a gain of 10. They move the chains. Stoddard completes his first pass of the day. That gets him inside the 20-yard line now. Let's see if we can put it in the end zone. That's been a problem of Buena Vista this year, hasn't it? Yes, it has. They've only completed five out of nine in the red zone, as they say. They've got a blitz. Hendrickson, the carrier, gain of about three, maybe. 
Motions are running high on the field. You see there's a little extracurricular activity after the, after the whistle blew on that one. Hopefully they'll be able to calm that down. Schweizo entering in the game, giving Stoddard the play. That offensive line is doing a good job. Yes, they are, especially consider, like we said, that they they've been only been working on these in these positions for about three days now. Now Stoddard looking pretty sharp, rolling right. Good cut block. Excellent Two beautiful protection. cut blocks. The pass incomplete. There's a flag on the play. We have a flag down. Thank you, Brad. Now. There were two excellent blocks going on to the weak side. They really did, and that's, that's key. If the, if the defense gets around your linemen, those running backs and fullbacks are supposed to be able to get up in there and keep, keep the quarterback protected. But we'll see what this flag's about. It might be holding on Buena Vista. We'll wait for the call. It the is against Buena Vista. The refer it's, it's clipping against Buena Vista to bat an illegal block. Maybe those blacks we're bragging about were just a little too good on that one, Dave. I, I, I think we got hosed on that call, Brad. <laughs> just kidding. Stoddard and the offense must not falter, though, as they are now pushed back just outside the under the 26-yard line. They must keep their poise here, Brad. Yes, they do. Confidence is real big here. They got to they gotta realize it's just one penalty. If they got inside there once, they can get in there again, and they just got to go for it. Stoddard stepping under center. Calling the cadence. Hands off to Hendrickson, who gains about three yards and then is pushed back. He should be at about the 30, oh, excuse me, yard. the 25 yard line, a gain of about a yard as he was pushed back and they did not give him forward progress. So he's sitting at the 25 yard line. That'll bring up third and about 15 for the Beavers. Zach Dillavo coming in, calling the play into Troy Stoddard. Look Render. for another rollout pass on this one. They've tried it up the gut two or three times and they haven't really gotten much yards whatsoever. Third and 18, Stoddard rolling out to his left. Let's her rip as he's hit. Ball tip, oh. nearly intercepted by Upper Iowa. So it brings up an interesting situation of fourth and 18. Do they punt here or do they go for it? You can't punt in, at the, on the 25 yard line. Do they try a field goal? Uh, they have, Buena Vista's not attempted a field goal all year and but a lot of it is because they've been they've been trying to, like we said, they fall behind early and they have to play catch up. So it'll be in our seat. Looks like Coach Twait's gonna go for it. Yes, it does, as he's bringing in three wide receivers. It'll be 86 Williams, 87 uh, Jeff Leitz. Starter back to pass, lofting it to Williams. Tipped and no good. That was an excellent defensive play by number 27. Williams almost got that ball as he elevated to an extremely high level. Upper eye was Mark Dutcher was, was stuck to him like glue. You just can't get a better defensive play than that. Stouter did what he could and the man just wasn't open. So again, BV turns it over on downs and Upper eye will take over, but deep in their own territory. Yes, and it'll be interesting to see if the Beavers can pressure the Upper Iowa offense, lots of motion. Dan Roberts sitting in the middle of the field, kind of near Nick Grant, who's played a heck of a game to this point. That's right. Walshire fumbles Another a fumble. snap, and I believe BB has recovered once They have again. it again. Upper Iowa just cannot hold on to the football. I don't know what it is. Maybe they're maybe they're a little nervous. Number number 76, Chris Barrons with a recovery of the senior, anchoring that defensive line, and he is just going crazy. That's our third turnover of the, of the first quarter here, but these turnovers mean nothing if the offense can't get it in the end zone. Now, I've been talking to coaches all week, and they have been stressing how to, to keep on to that fumbles. John Brown, the defensive line coach, must be pretty happy. Yes, Troy, he must. Troy Stoddard brings the defense or offense up on it. He's back to pass. Trying to pass deep to Williams. Intercepted. That was Dutcher again. Again, excellent coverage. So the Beavers take it, or the Beavers lose it after they just recover, after the fumble recovery by Chris Behrens. The Beavers give it right back. Stouter underthrew him just a little bit, and that's all that Dutcher needed to come up with a big interception to get the ball right back for the Peacocks. Now, do you think that might have been going for it too too quick? Or do you I think, think he just got a little anxious. They've had they've been down in there three times now and haven't been able to get it in. I think he went for it just maybe a little too soon. Well, let's hope that defense can cause another fumble. Walshire, this offense has not run has run one offensive play to this point. 
five turnovers for Upper Iowa, and that's big because they've only run, like I said, one offensive play. They do keep the ball handed to Billy Proctor and Nick Grant with a tackle. Excellent defense by Oh, Grant. we got some pushing and shoving going on. Flags are flying. Personal foul on number Upper Iowa offensive lineman number 68 did the shoving right there. And we, we can find out what number his is. He shoved Nick Grant after the tackle, totally uncalled for. Number 68, Clint Rogers just lost his cool. He was, I think that I think the Buena Vista defense has really got Upper Iowa frustrated at this point. I would believe so. Because Clint Rogers totally uncharacteristic. Five turnovers in this quarter alone. We're not even we're 632 left in the first quarter. This has got to be bad for the for Upper Iowa Peacocks. And we move the ball back all the way to if we can get the that ten in, yard line. The 10 yard line, just at about the 11, actually. Yes, thank you to the cameraman. Our cameramen are doing a sensational job to this point. We thank you. All right. Buena Vista's defense is just causing a lot of havoc, a lot of frustration on that upper Iowa show. Yes, by they are. Shoving. Billy Proctor in the background, or backfield, excuse me. Walshire stepping under center. Walshire going to pass. A quick, quick sh pass out to number 21. He re-catches the ball for a gain of about, oh, I'd say five yards. That was Mario Coleman, a sophomore out of Chicago, Illinois. Did a nice job. They had three wide receivers split out to the right side, and they had a little crossing pattern there to get the Buena Vista defenders mixed up, and he was wide open on that. Luckily, he fell down as he caught it. Gain of six, pardon me, at the, as they are at the 17-yard line. No huddle offense. No back, no uh, running back in the backfield as Fractor split out to the left side. Coleman just inside, uh, off, just off the tackle on the left side. All receivers. Receiver in motion number 40. Walshire back to pass. Obviously going to the left. And he's sacked! And big sack. Number 66. 65. 65. Giesel, I do believe. That's Jason Giesel, the diesel once again, coming up with a big defensive play. And that will bring up fourth down. The Peacocks will have to punt. Buna Vista's defense is really coming through. The yes, they are. And Giesel himself is only a freshman. He's out of Garner Hayfield High School. His coach, Daryl Schumacher, must be proud of that play right there. Williams will be back to receive probably at the most shuffle field position they have had all year <laughs> at the start. <laughs> He's back at the Upper Iowa 47-yard line awaiting the punt. A lot of pressure. Barely gets it off. Williams is going to return this one. He catches it. What a move! Here he comes. He gets out at about the 38-yard line, 33-yard line of Buena Vista. What a return by Williams. This yes, offense it was. is pumped. They are. This whole team is pumped. This whole crowd is pumped. Hum -da, hum -da, hum -da, hum -da. <laughs> yes, and you gotta love the job the defensive line is doing tonight. I mean, they're through. All we've heard about is how great this Upper Iowa offense is, and our defense is showing them that we can play football over here, too. Five turnovers in one quarter is evident that there's a lot of frustration going on. The referees are conversing about something. That I don't know. I do believe there's a flag on the play. And it's on Upper Iowa, it looks like. I no. It's on Puna Vista, it does, I do believe. Holding I didn't on. see the flag throw. Holding on Puna Vista. Coach Twait doesn't understand that call. He's going to ask the officials for some for some clarification on that. And he's not really getting an answer, as you can tell by the look <laughs> on his face. Not too happy about the call. So that's going to take away an excellent return. I don't know if the defense is going to have to come back on here because we've got... Oh, they may have to redo the punt, is what I'm thinking, because you've got Brent Achenbach, Nick Grant... Jason Edwards coming on the field. Chris Barons has been standing there the whole entire time. He's waiting to get the call to see what's going to happen. He's a captain out there. Yes, I, I do understand this. I, I don't understand exactly what's going to happen here. No, the offense Deep. is coming off the field. They're, they're going to re-punt the ball, I do believe. Yes, they are. That's what they're doing. The infraction took place before the punt was made so that they get to replay the down. That'll be 10 yards for for the punt that still doesn't give them the first down there are still about 10 yards shy of the first down just shows how defense is working for BV right. Williams now back at his 45 awaiting the punt snap fumbled almost blocked by Nick Grant who got good penetration there Williams going to return it again oh. he's tackled right away no game 45 yard line is where he'll stand so that took away about 15 yards for the Beaver offense, but... But you can't knock them because one of those little things that, that happens in football games. That's right. 
Stoddard bringing his offense out onto the field. They gotta be excited. A good sight to see is Mitch Cachette is on the sideline. Tentative to play today, but still exciting to see him back after a long knee injury. That's right. Always hate to see those knee injuries. You never know what could happen, but he's back and he's gonna be ready to play soon. Hendrickson, the first man through, gets the carry and he gains about three yards. And I think I just saw like a headlock by number 74. <laughs> They'll call the number 74 would happen to be Steve Norris. Yes, Steve Norris. Stoddard awaiting uh, Zach Dillavo bringing the bringing the play in. BB Get might have to go away from this running it up the gut again and again because the the Peacock defensive line is just too powerful. They break through there pretty easily, it looks now, like. Now they've altered their defense. Now they have only two linebackers. It's a 52 defense. Stoddard slips and falls. Oh. <laughs> he just lost his footing on that one. Not much you can do about it. There was he had Joyce behind him for the option, but he just couldn't get his footing back. Now number 74, what was his name again? Pardon my friend. That'd be Steve Norris. Steve Norris was going to catch him if Stoddard wouldn't catch him if Stoddard would, uh, didn't slip and Stoddard would have been around the corner where he could have pitched for the option very easily. There you go. Williams to the near side of the field. Shreeslow out to the right. Two backs, Joyce and Hart. Stoddard passing. Going over the middle. Incomplete. Intended for Shreeslow. No, no flag on the play. Shreeslow looking for one. Could have been, a, it's hard to tell from way back here. Those refs got a lot better angle than we do, and it's, it's really easy to second guess them on all these plays, but they're doing a pretty good job. Huffgay back for his third or fourth punt of the quarter, as we've got 336 left in the quarter. Starter is one for five thus far. It's a short kick. But it takes a let BB it bounce. It, it takes a BB bounce all the way down. To about the 20. 15-yard oh, line. So the 14-yard line. Yes, they're going to place it just inside the 15. Good call, Brad. Good call. Neither offense have really had much success whatsoever moving the ball. BV's gotten down into Upper Iowa territory twice now, but they just haven't been able to get it in for scores. And Upper Iowa's had five turnovers this quarter alone. Haven't done a thing. 324 left in the quarter. Punavista's defense is coming on, and they have got to be totally pumped right now. That's Roberts. Right. Pacing just behind Grant, Murphy kind of drops back. Achenbach is sitting over the right, covering Walshire. Uh -oh. Draw. He's got a hole. <laughs> Number 40 for Upper Iowa. Proctor, Billy Proctor gains about 20 some yards. Let's see where they mark the ball. Yes, he gained all the way out to the 40 yard 40 yard line. That there you a, see Coach Twait talking with his offense, trying to get him fired up. That is a 25 yard run. Credit Chad Sumney with that tackle. With this no huddle offense, the defense gets no time to rest in between plays. They're right back on the line of scrimmage. Walshire with a pass complete to number eight, tackled immediately by number 43. Kerry Murphy. Catch made by Daniel Donisthorpe. He's a junior out of Norwalk, California. Kerry Murphy with a good tackle to prevent more yardage as Upper Iowa is now mounting an offensive front. A lot of motion again. Proctor goes in motion there. The tight end switches sides. <clears throat> this defense still should not be depressed. Washar slips a little bit. They get Proctor. It's Jason Edwards with an extremely good tackle. Backed up by Daniel Dan Roberts. Edwards with a heck of a play right there. Excellent penetration by Edwards. He blasted right by the, by the offensive lineman, got in behind there, and brought the runner down. What a play. Giesel almost got there to help out of the play, but Edwards did a heck of a job. He came all the way from in, the inside position on that defensive line. He's a tackle, and he got, on, he got to the outside pretty quick. Walshire under center. Calling some cadence. Changing the play at the line of scrimmage. Mario Coleman, a little confusion on where they go. Coleman now in motion to the other side of the field. Walshire back to blast, pass, Makes the Thanks, and he's sacked. Chris Barrons, I do believe. Yes, and he had a man on him, Brad. Yes, he did. Did a great job of fighting him off and bringing him down. Did a heck of a job. What a play by Barrons. A senior anchors this defensive line for Buena Vista, which is a very powerful line. You see fans on hand galore. We're packed. 
And uh, the fans and students are out in full force even despite the chilly day. Here comes another punt by Upper Iowa. Williams back to receive at his 20-yard line. Man in motion, number two for Upper Iowa. He's going to help block. Another bad snap. Oh, this is a horrible punt. It's going to go be no out of bounds. On that. And the cheerleader will fetch that ball. <laughs> yeah. He'll, the refs mark it right on the 35-yard line. That's where Bunavis will have started second. Or it's probably its last possession of the first quarter. Neither team really moving the ball all that much. No, they're not. The defensive have really taken over right now, right away here in this ball game. Starter and Schwieslo coming into the game. Starter calling a play and bringing him up to the line. Williams to the near side. Williams Williams to the near side, excuse me. Schwieslo out to the far side. Handing it off to Brian Hart, who's up hold. the right side, churning his way for nine yards. That was an excellent job blocking by the right side of the Beaver offensive line there. Credit Chris Roslow and Wade Rinkerneck. Renderneck. Renderneck, excuse me, for opening up that hole. Beautiful run, and that's exactly what they needed. Just a, a big surge off the line. Especially on first down, because that gives them a lot of options here on second and short. Second and short is correct. Williams for the far side. Zach Dilvo to the near side. Started calling the play off. Hendrickson and Hart in there. To make carry to the first man through. Hendrickson, I don't know what his far as pro forward progress will give him. I think that's a gain of about one yard. If that, Dave, it looks like he hit the line of scrimmage and that was about it. They did give him a yard though to the four, excuse me, scars, pardon me, to the 44 of Buena Vista. So it'll bring up third and one. Beavers are gonna have to convert on this third down. They've only, they've only turned over 21.9% of the third down conversions this year, and this could be a big one. Hand off to Hart, who's going around the right side, and he gets the first down, a gain of three does. yards. Yes! That was a, ni that was a nice play. They, they plugged it up the, up the middle two times in a row, and then they came around the outside, and really keeps that defense guessing. Okay, we're gonna have to send you to a break. Now, we're gonna have to send you to a break right now at the end of this quarter. As the first quarter comes to an end, five turnovers for Upper Iowa, neither scored 0-0. Zero, zero. We'll join you in a couple minutes. Call today and order the Honey Kiss Special. Two medium, two topping pizzas, plus one order of delicious cinnamon breadsticks for only $12.99. Honey on the dough, honey butter on the crust. It's great quality, it's a great value, and it's fast. Call 732-2222 for Honey Kiss Pizza. We have down that there are only three turnovers for Upper Iowa. We'll check on those stats in just a moment. But Abuna Vista has the ball. We'll, we'll kind of set the situation if you're just joining us. They are on the 46-yard line of Bina Vista, just four yards away from the 50. Stoddard coming under center. Calling the play. He hands, no, he rolls out Looking right. To Looking to pass, almost gets sacked oh. and up and ended. He his, uh, hit quite hard. And Stouter's down. He's not He's up yet. He's slow to get up. He is not up yet, no. He took a pretty tough shot on that one. Yes, he did, but uh, looks like he's just gonna Grin and Barrett as he walks back to the huddle. Credit number 32, James Hendrickson, the fullback, for making a great block to get Stoddard at least another, an extra two yards on that play. Gain of one yard, folks. Second and nine. Check that. That'd be he, he ended up losing four yards on that play. It'll be second and 14. Yes, he did. I'm sorry. Second and 14. Thank you, Brad. No problem. He's looking to pass again. Stoddard looking to pass. Uh, oh, he's going to get sacked. Number 74 and number 98 on the sack. Excuse me, 89. <laughs> That'd be Steve Norris and Jeremy Feldman on that play. They did a great job of coming all the way across the field, getting by their blockers to catch Stouter. So that'll, that's another loss, and this is what BV didn't want to start off the second quarter. Play. No, they did. They were they did a pretty decent, fairly decent job of moving the ball in that first quarter until they got down into the inside about the 30-yard line, and now it's obvious they're going to have to pass three wide receivers set out to the right side of the field. William Suiswo and number 16 for Buena Vista. But he hands up off the middle on the draw play. And, a, and they didn't gain much. 
gain of about two, but that doesn't that doesn't mean much to you when you need it about 20. Hendrickson gains those two yards. Now, yeah, is that a questionable call in this situation, Brad? I don't know. Well, like I said, everybody was looking for a pass on that one, and Coach, Coach Toit was probably figuring maybe he could fool that defense, but that line is pretty tough. So, Huffke is in the punt, and he lays a beauty to receiving number five. Bobbles the ball, and he is met at the 29 by number 56 and number 66, Jason Edwards. Riesland and Edwards did a fine job of containing on that play. They stopped him about five yards after he caught the ball, and that's a really nice job. That's what you like to see. Yeah. And Walshire lead his uh, offense up to the line. Achenbach, the defensive corner, up to your right. And the defense is really playing well to this point. Yes, they are. They're playing inspired football. I, I'm sure all the hype about Matt Walshire and this Upper Iowa offense has really gotten them pretty mad because everybody's forgot about the Buena Vista defense. And it's a good, solid defense that's young. Yes, they are. Walshire hands off to Proctor. He's going nowhere. A, third, a gain of maybe one. Th this is just an incredible performance by the Buena Vista defensive line. They are blowing through that Peacock line like it was nothing. We're going to get an upper line, Iowa lineup sheet real quick here to get you some of the names of the players we're missing. Number five to the near side, Mario Coleman in motion. Walshire to pass, and he's almost got, they almost get him. Achenbach. Completes the pass, but that's just for a minimal gain right there. That's not what Upper Iowa was looking for. Again, credit the defensive line. They pressured Wilshire early, and he's not a very mobile quarterback. He's a drop back, looking for his open receiver, quick release. He's just, he's not real mobile. The Dan Roberts came up and made a great play to, to, to avoid very minimal gain in yardage. And number 66, Jason Edwards almost got Walshire again. Again, that's right. Walshire bringing him up to the line. He's uh, no huddle offense. And he's calling out the cadence. You've got four wide receivers, no back. Proctor, the near near wide receiver. Walshire back to pass. He's pressured, and Barron's There's got a sack. It. Chris Barron's with the sack. This defense is just incredible today. It's it's unreal. It's unreal. That, my friends, is the fifth sack by Puna Vista. The fifth sack, and that is just amazing. I don't know what Coach Twait told him before the game today, but this defense is playing some inspired football right now. Now, the defensive line coach is John Brown. He's got these boys ready. And another, he, they're playing inspired football. Yes, they are. Time for another Upper Iowa punt. Jeff Post is the defense coordinator, and he's doing something right. Low punt, almost blocked. Williams is going to return this one. Nowhere. A flag on the play. We might get a holding on number 22 on that one. He kind of he dove back into the pile after. Yes, a little bit of gang tackling, maybe a personal foul. We don't know. Univis, the players waiting on the field to see what's going on. And this, and you see, uh, Barons and Giesel coming off the field. They are warriors today. Yes, they are. You can't give enough credit to this defensive line so far in this first half. They've just did an excellent job of containing uh, Matt pen Walshire. Penalty against Buena Vista. I'm not quite sure what it is yet. I believe it's against Buena Vista as the Buena Vista huddle is moving backwards. And <laughs> That's not know. a good sign. <laughs> not a good sign. Waiting for the call. It is illegal block in the back. Yes, clipping. That's what I thought. So that'll push them that'll back. That'll push them back. Not a good sign for the Beavers. Not too far. They're at the 40 yard, their 39 yard line, their own 39, and uh, we'll see how they move the ball. That'll bring up first and 10 with 11.44 in the quarter. Their defense is playing uh, really well. Now it's time for their offense to kick into gear. That's here. right. Well, neither offense has played that well. Either that or the defense have just played outstanding. We'll see what Stouter can do here. Stouter hands off to Andy Joyce. A gain of four yards. Good run by Andy Joyce as he slipped up the right side. For a gain of four. Again, first down plays are very important. You want to get a, a good four to five yard gain on each first down to give your offense more option on second down. If you get back in a hole on first down, you don't have much choice but to pass on second. So this is good for the Beavers. So that bring up second down and six yards. Stoddard pitching over to Joyce again. He's got he a cuts back, blocks. and he's going to get to that the That could be enough for a first down. It is a first down depending on the spots, if they give them a bad spot. They're, 
We're going to put him right on 40 and let's move the chains. They're on the 50 yard line. Exactamundo, first down, good run by Andy Joyce as he's just picked up 10 yards on two carries. That's right, he's got some excellent blocks too, both from the lineman and his fellow running back there. Now, Kanak and and uh, Rendernick pulled the two guards. Yes, they did a good exact... job getting out there ahead of Joyce to get, get that lead block he needed. Here There's comes a blitz. blitz, they pick it up, and Joyce runs up the middle for a gain of six yards. What a run. He's running tough today, I don't know. Coach Twight must have had one in inspirational speech before the game this morning because they're, they're playing some really good football. Hendrickson picked up that block as you see Joyce running back to the huddle. Hendrickson picked up the blitz that would have just crushed Andy Joyce. Quick reflex there by Hendrickson. And that's the key. That's something that's been uh, plaguing the Beavers. They're missing some of the blocks that they need to just kind of spring right. their players. That's right. They come so close. Just one tackle is all it needs. Though. Stoddard under center, sweet swallow in motion. That's Andy right. Joyce to the left. He's going to gain more. Another first down for A the Beavers. First down. He's going to get to the 35-yard line. I think they're going to mark him at the just inside the 35 and just between the 34. It's about 34.5. <laughs> and, and now the ref switches it to the other side. He doesn't know where he wants to put it. I guess, so yeah. We're, we're back to the 36, 35 and a half. Yes, yeah, 35, 35 and, and a half. half. All right. Okay, we're going to have a PSA shortly depending on what the Beavers do here. Stott, and we hope Hopefully they score. Hopefully they put her in the end zone. That's what we're looking for. Stoddard bringing him under center. Hands off to Joyce again, who's up the middle for a gain of one. And the Peacocks were ready for that one. Joyce has handled the ball about four times in a row now, and they knew he was coming on We that. got the Beaver up the, in the stands with a toga. <laughs> <laughs> it's Greek week. Yeah, it's Greek week here at Buena Vista. He's pretty happy. That's right. But uh, we're really impressed right now because it, it seems like the offense is starting to kind of get get their blocks down. They really and are. get clicking on all cylinders. Here. A lot of the nerves have calmed down now. You know, they're, everybody gets so pumped up. It's homecoming. It's a big game. And now I think they've relaxed. And may, hopefully the offense has gotten themselves into a rhythm here where they can keep it rolling down the field. Stoddard back to pass. Yeah, Stoddard out and back to pass. And looks, he's going to throw a screen pass in and out of the hands of Brian Hart. Just a tad high on that one. If he could have hit him in the numbers, they would have had maybe about a five or six yard gain. But still, a nice play. Now you can't, this uh, offense is really good. They're, they're mixing it up as you see the beaver and the toga right there. That yep. was a pretty good shot by the field <laughs> camp. And uh, Stoddard sitting back in the huddle. Zach Dillavo. Zach Dillavo comes into the game and checks to see what's going on. Stoddard coming up on the play. He's back to pass, rolling left. Looking for someone to throw to. He's got a receiver. Zach Dillavo catches the ball for a first down to the 23-yard line. They gave him the catch on that one. That was an excellent play both by Stoddard and by Dillavo. Now, he had three options there. Ryan Hart was sitting wide open in the flat. And, and Stoddard had room to run, too. Yes, room to run, and Dillavo in the who caught the ball. Looks like he made gain, the right choice. A gain of 16. And the first down. Here we are, back inside the 25. We're in the red zone. Dillavo and Williams, to, or Schwiso to the right. He's got room to run. He's running, and he'll get to about the 16-yard line. 17-yard line. That Stouter's one tough kid. He's not afraid to put his head down and maybe put a hurt on one of the defensive players. Usually a quarterback's going to step out of bounds or slide down on their knees to avoid the hit, but Stouter, he's going to put the hit on some defensive boys. Okay, they didn't give forward progress. He's at the 17-yard line of Upper Iowa. All right, here we go. Now, if... If Ober he was in there, granted he did a great job, but he isn't really as mobile as Stouter. No, he's not. That's that's that added dimension that, that Stouter brings to this team. We've got Sweet Swallow in motion coming to the near side. Hand off to Hart, who's up the right side, chugging, and he might he may be close to a first down, folks. Another excellent play by the line on this one. They're really coming into a rhythm now, getting their blocks down. And it is a first down, a gain of 12 yards. They're up to just inside the 12, started at the 17, or 27, excuse me, right. something like that. It's crucial for Buena Vista to get into the end zone now, not only for the score, but also for their confidence. You get in this close, you, you just got to put it in the end zone, or it, it really hurts you mentally. So Hart has 24 yards, according to my records, to this point. Stoddard hands off to Hart again. He will gain nothing. Credit that one to the defensive line. They did a great job of standing up the 47 line. 47 and 79 for Upper Iowa on the tackles. 
number 47 is Todd Ty Eichlenborg. Yeah. That's that strong safety we told you Charles about out of New, New Hartford. And Charles Taylor is number 79, a defensive tackle who's a senior for Upper Iowa. 47, and Todd, Todd Ecklenberg has been making a lot of tackles. A starter brings his crew up to the line. Hendrickson and Hart in the backfield. Dillavo in motion. There, a pitch uh -oh. to Hart. A great athletic play. He avoids the tackle. He'll be tackled for a loss. Inside the red zone, they're having problems running the ball. I think they're just getting a little nervous. You saw that Stouter just pitched that one just a little bit wild on that one. Hart did a great job of pulling it in to avoid the fumble. But the timing was all knocked off on that one, and he couldn't get any yardage out of it. In fact, a loss. That'll bring up third and a bundle. About third to 16 right now. And Stoddard, obviously a passing situation, which is something that they did not want to get in. No, they didn't, especially when you're this close. There's not a lot of room to work, field to work with down in here, and this pass is going to have to be short, and Upper Iowa's going to be looking for one. Now maybe if they can at least get a, a substantial gain or a touchdown here, we can get some points on the board. Put her in the end zone. Back to pass. He's going to have to get away from number 88, the defense seven. He's running the ball. No, he passes. Touchdowns! Touchdown to number 40, Mark Hitzler, the tight end. Stoddard rolling left. That's that running dimension that we have in there. Excellent play by Chris Stoddard right there. Running Rolled left. out, had a guy right on his back, kept the composure, and found the open man in the end zone. An Just extremely a great play. awesome play as he's right-handed, running left, Threw it guns across it his right. Body. Just an incredible play, and let's see if we can convert on the extra point And here. this, look at the Buena Vista sideline is crowd just is going wild. awesome. And extra point is up, and it's, it's good. good. Number 95 for Buena Vista. Here we go. I have, I have no clue who that is. You're on the wrong play there, boy. 95. 95. Thank That'd be you. Matt Gregg. Thank you for helping out. No problem. No problem. He's well, I turned the page there. <laughs> I'm so excited. He's a freshman tight end out of Story okay. City. Okay, we're going to cut to a break at PSA. Below the cover. They have to reach higher for what others take for granted. Health care, balanced meals, encouragement to learn. But with help early on, children in your community can gain the skills to get out from below the poverty line. It takes programs like Success by Six and people like you to help them take the first step. Call to learn more. Change the world of a child, and you change the world. We are back here. Excited, folks? Yes, you should be, because the Beavers are up 7 to nothing, and they awesome display because they started in their own, at their own 26 or 36 run there in their own territory and moved the ball straight down the field for a score. That really was an impressive drive there and they mixed it up well and now Upper Iowa is going to get another crack into the offense. Mario Coleman with the return. He's holding that ball pretty loose. Oh, he's getting around the outside to the 36 yard line. Nice job by Joyce on the tackle there. He's really a tough special teams player. Nick Grant got up slowly on that in the middle of the field. That would be a huge loss for the Beavers. Looks like he just got a little dinged up there. The trainers are out there to check him out, and they'll get him on the sidelines. And Doc, the team trainer, what a guy that he is. He's just, he works with every athletic program here at Buena Vista and has done just an extremely good job. Let's hope Grant is okay. We'll get an injury report. Can we get an injury report as soon as humanly possible? Mitch Cushette, it's nice to see him back on there. Tweet. Console, consoling his offense, saying, hey, great job, fellas. Mitch Cachette will be in the center in Grant's place. Wilshire's going to run. And Mitch Cachette makes the tackle. Steps in on the first play and does an excellent job. That has to feel good for a guy who hasn't played in a you, long time. You bet. He's an animal out there, I tell you. I was talking to him earlier in the week, and he says, I can just taste it on my tongue. You know he I'm going to be playing football this <laughs> weekend, Dave. So this defense is playing extremely inspired defense. They're hungry out they're there. They're hungry, like yes. Like you said, they've been hitting each other for the past two weeks, and they're just ready to put the pads on somebody else, and they're doing a great that job. That is a nice score to see on your screen, folks. Buena seven Vista to nothing, seven. Buena Vista. Walshire back to pass. A good rush on there. Intercept. Oh! oh Aachen. In and out of the hands of number 30 Brent right Aachen there. Brent Achenbach almost comes up with a snag, and he was ever so close. A good Made athletic himself diving right out there. play. Oh, would have been a beautiful catch if he would have caught it. And this pressure is just unbelievable. It is. The defensive line, I, I don't know what to say. I Walshire really was on his back again, and the defensive backs were all over the receivers. Walshire up again. 
Goodley Proctor, Billy Proctor, pardon me, is to the near side with number five from Upper Iowa. Four wide wide receiver. And he sacked and hit his the ball's balls in the air. They're going to call it dead right there. They said his arm was going for okay. it. That's an incomplete pass. That's an incomplete pass. But nevertheless, number 23 may hold him. That is Hopkins. I'm not sure what's going on here, but Brett Oberhaus grabbing his helmet. He's been warming up on the sidelines. We'll have to get a report on that and see what's up with Chris Stouter. Okay, the, the Upper Iowa offense is going to punt, and we'll see what's going on here. They haven't been punting the ball really well. Low snap no, again. They've been, they've been having trouble with that all day, and that's a terrible punt. <laughs> it's going to go out of better watch out because it almost nailed him. Dead at about the 36-yard line of Buena Vista. We're going to take you to a break right now. We'll join you in just a second. 30 seconds. Storm Lake, get ready for Honey Kiss Pizza. Hot, delicious pizza on a whole wheat crust, loaded with the finest ingredients and kissed with a sweet touch of honey. It's gourmet pizza like you've never tasted before, served up piping hot and delivered right to your door. Call today and order the Honey Kiss Special. Two medium, two topping pizzas, plus one order of delicious cinnamon breadsticks for only $12.99. Honey on the dough, honey butter on the crust. It's great quality, it's a great value, and it's fast. Call 732-2222 for Honey Kiss Pizza. Back to, welcome back to Jay Leslie Rollins Stadium. Injury report on Nick Grant, what is it? Well, we understand from the trainers that he got, he just twisted his ankle a little bit. They're checking him out. He's walking back and forth on there. That's a really good sign. They hope to see him back later on in the game. Okay, first play, Buena Vista didn't gain anything. In fact, they lost about four yards. Stoddard under center, pitches to Joyce, who's been He's running the ball down. exceptionally well. He is getting nowhere. They lose again. The guards and tackle pulling from the left, from the weak side for Buena Vista did not get there in time as number 47 for uh, Upper Iowa, Todd Ecklenberg, he's just having a good game, and Charles Taylor They're came both over to make the stop. All of them are doing a great <laughs> job. You see the Beaver and the Beaver and the cheerleaders laughing it up down there on the sidelines. They do a great job of getting that crowd involved and keeping everybody excited about the football game. It will be third down and about 16 for the Beavers, and Stoddard has obviously put in a passing situation. Now remember, Looks Stoddard that made way. that athletic play for the touchdown. No reason why he can't do it here. No doubt, no doubt. They They're going to try the reverse. Craig Williams he's got open field. Man. And he's who? He's going to get. One man to beat. Oh, oh, he's tackled. But he gains five yards. Better position as far as punting. If the, and that does help. An exciting play, though. An interesting call by Coach Twait there. He's, there you see Nick Graham being checked out on the sidelines. Hopefully he'll be back in there for that next defensive play because Buena Vista is forced to punt right now. Nick Grant doing a tremendous job. It seems to me that he's going to be okay. We haven't heard anything. Fourth and 12, the Beavers are going to be uh, forced to punt, and that's too bad. Almost blocked, but a good punt. Taking number five back to his. Got guy. Uh, we've got a clip there, folks. Not called. Number five going down the sidelines. Get his name. Upper Iowa returns it for a touchdown. No Gary Land. Touchdown, Gary, Gary Land. Looked like there might have been a one or two clips on that play, but the refs obviously didn't see the same thing we did. And the coaches for Buena Vista do not look happy, folks. They upper, are furious. Upper Iowa with a punt return of a, of a really good punt. It was, and but maybe might have been too good of a punt. Gary Lynn showed excellent speed on that play, and he got around the defense as they came down the field and just burned right down the sidelines there. Team speed was a big concern for Coach Toit this week there. That was an 80-yard punt return as he caught it just at his 20-yard line. That's an right. awesome punt, but it uh, was. nevertheless. A big play for Upper Iowa. That's a big confidence booster for him. We're going to have to see how, Buena, how the Buena Vista offense reacts to this. So with 239, Sam Tietzen to attempt the extra snap. point. And they do get the extra point. And so we're tied now 7-7. Seven to seven. Uh, here at uh, Buena Vista's 1993 homecoming game. I think we're going to send you to a break. No, we're going to keep it right here, folks. 7-7 seven seven is our score. Sorry about that. So uh, the mental mindset for the Beavers, where should it stand right now? they got to be feeling really good about themselves right now. They, they, what they did what they wanted to do. They wanted to get on the board right away early. They got this first score. This punt return here by by Lynn really has to hurt them, but hopefully their offense, can, they got the composure. Like you said, Stouter is a very confident quarterback. Hopefully he can lead them down the field, maybe put on one more score before halftime with okay. 3.29 left. 
returning for the Beavers, we've got number 27 again. Mark Dutra. Uh, number, number 27 is Darren Dietz. He's a junior wide receiver out of Ionia. Sorry, my mistake. No problem there, Dave. Right next to him is number 38, Chad Hissler, and number 39, Mark Sievers is on the far side of the field. Thank you, Brad. That's Sorry what I'm here that. for. <laughs> <laughs> Travis Weimer to kick off. He's a freshman out of West Union, Iowa. Taken by the center man. That's number 38, Hissler. Hissler, who is doing quite well in returning in the conference. Really is. I think, if I'm second not mistaken, is he second? That's right. Okay. And he got it back out to about the 34-yard line of Buena Vista. Stoddard will bring his troops onto the field. Let's see if we can get another score because they moved the ball quite well last game. Staying high to the cheerleaders down the sideline. Must be kind of cold down there. Yeah, I think it, it's a little cold up here too. Okay, so we saw it on the far side. Williams to the near side. Stoddard under center. He's back to pass. <clears throat> he dumps it off to Hendrickson who gains. Oh, makes a good cutback. He'll gain of about seven, if I do believe. He'll get to the 41-yard line. Nice play right there. Again, another big first down. Sets up the options for the offense here and see what Troy Stouter can do with it. He is to the 41. Like I said, that'll bring up second and four. That puts more options into their game. That's right. Now, Stouter, you know you can maybe risk a pass on here because only need three yards to go for that next first down. They got to keep the ball moving, though, because the clock's ticking with 2.50 left in the first half. A handoff to Brian Hart. He's going to plugs, and I think he got to the 45-yard line. Excellent second effort by Hart right there. Did a great job. He had a guy hanging on to him, and he laid himself out for maybe an extra two, maybe even three yards for that. Uh, that there, that is a first down, We're folks. Moving it's the chains. Moving the chains. A gain of five yards. Again, just an excellent second effort on that one. Broke through the first tackle and kept his forward momentum going. Bringing it out to line Stoddard. So they're moving the ball quite well. Hendrickson and Hart, Hart in the background. Hart is hit. Now the Beavers are going to have to be careful here because with only two, 225 left in the first half, they're going to have to stop the clock somehow. They have all their timeouts. Maybe they're going to call one or two of them and start throwing the ball. Scott Hermit checking into the game for the Beavers. Andy Joyce coming in. 